thank you so much for taking the time. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> no uh, worries at all. So where are you? Uh, I'm based in the UK, Bristol. Um, yeah. Uh, but I'm from Germany, but I moved here like two years ago. Oh, cool. Uh, um, cool I just cool. need to check something because subtitles are on for some reason. Um, subtitles? Subtitles. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah, it's a thing for Skype, actually. Well, I, I don't necessarily need them. I don't know where to change it. I don't see subtitles ah, okay. On, okay. on my side. Yeah, I was in uh, I was in England a couple times. Uh, last time was just before the well before the pandemic, before the the borders shut down. I was doing I did I did some stuff there. Amazing. Uh, what did you do here? Uh, I did the Philip and Holly show. Um, yes, I think I've seen your interview actually. Um, yeah, that was like the morning show, right? Yeah, yeah. Did, the, did the morning show, uh, and then. And they brought me back for that because I, I initially was out there for a couple conferences, yeah. And then uh, I mean, you know, it was it was weird. I did the 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 gather the gather festival over in Stockholm, and then I came back for the Flat Earth conference in the UK, and I went home, and so the Philip and Holly people caught some of that, and so they flew me back over. And then I was supposed to fly back again for uh, a McDonald's commercial. Because they have pancake, Amazing. yeah, pancake day in uh, in the UK for some reason, and they said, "Oh yeah, we can absolutely do a tie-in," and we were all ready to go, and that was the beginning of 2022, and then all of a sudden they said, "Yeah, sorry, the border's closed. You can't come in." It's like crap. Oh no! Yeah. Oh yeah, COVID yeah messed yeah. us all up a bit. I can, for example, go back to Germany for quite a few months. It was yeah, by, by the way, time. you've only you've only been in England for a couple of years. Yes, yes. You, you you have developed quite an English accent. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to hear that because I kind of want to get away from the German accent. It's just I mean, yeah, the, a little bit of the German accent slips in, but every once in a while. But the um, but if if you if I didn't know any better, if you hadn't said that you were from Germany, I would have said, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, hey. thank you. That's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it okay if we just do a recording test real quick? So, sure. Um, sure. Go ahead. Uh, I, I, yeah, so I make can make sure that everything's all right. Um, cool, just test, test, test. Um, can you say something real quick? This is a test of the emergency broadcast system, the broadcasters <laughs> in your area in cooperation with federal, state, and local authorities. Blah, 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 blah. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'll just... Okay. Um... You know, there's also a, a record button in Skype if you didn't want to, re if, you didn't, if you didn't want to use the third party system. Oh, yes, I know that. I, I can actually maybe use... Both. I don't know. I, I don't, don't know if you can use. I, can, I don't know if you can use both at the same time on the same yeah. system. But I'm using OBS now. Oh no, you're fine. You're fine. And yeah. I, I'm I'm recording on this side for redundancy anyway. Perfect. Yeah, so if if something collapses on your side, just let me know and I'll shoot you the audio. Thank you so much. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, cool. I'll start recording then. Okay. So yeah, um, thank you so much, first of all, for, for taking the time for the interview. That's actually really amazing. Uh, um, yeah, such an honor to meet you. And yeah, firstly, I want to say, um, yeah, this documentary is basically about, or like the documentary I'm making is basically about different worldviews. Mm -hmm. And one point of it especially is how we can use social media or how social media in the kind of, uh, um, yeah, can shape our views in a way mm -hmm. and uh yeah this interview will mainly be about a flat earth as well um i'm personally not believing in it but i've been yeah. always fascinated with it i would be surprised um, if you were but hey, no <laughs> no questions are off limits so ask whatever Honestly, you want um yeah i don't think there will be much of a discussion i will ask questions you give answers i will follow up questions um i'm not gonna yeah uh, um edited in a way that I will basically um, change what you're saying or something, okay. if you know what I mean. I, I will leave the interview as raw as possible, basically. Okay. Um, that's important for me. And well, if there's something in the interview which you would like me to delete afterwards, that's also fine for me. Um, okay. Just let me know. No, no, no. Um, I, I, I never edit interviews, if I can help it. So. Yeah, same, same. Uh, I really like doing documentaries. I really got into it in the last year, and it's just well, thanks. really cool. <laughs> thanks. 
And it's, it gives me like the opportunity to meet like really exciting people. It's just I, yeah. I don't know if I'm an exciting person, but <laughs> I, I have been called interesting from time to time. So thank you. <laughs> no worries. Um, cool. Uh, for the viewer, could you just introduce yourself? Sure. And yeah, tell them what you're doing. My name is Mark Kendall Sargent. I am from America, based just north uh, of Seattle, Washington. And I am and have been the Flat Earth recruiter for the, the big Flat Earth movement that started in about 2015 and have been doing it for the last seven and a half years. And cool. so that, that's what I do. I, I get people interested in the whole Flat Earth concept and put my content out there on social media and never intended to do it, but this is what I'm doing now. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so since when do you believe in the flat earth? And yeah, what made you change your belief? Uh, what made me change my belief was I tried to debunk it. I, I tried to disprove flat earth. Uh, I, I knew just about every, I have an opinion on just about every conspiracy you can think of, be it American or, or British or, or whatever. And I, I ran out of conspiracies to look at. So I looked at this one, thought it was absolutely ridiculous and tried to disprove it. And while you're doing that, you realize very quickly how much the Americans created an image, a brand, an illusion that the space program is 100% real. And what, what gets me, and I'll, let me throw in a, a caveat really quick, which is when I was at the Gather Festival uh, out in Stockholm, I asked him, it always surprises me, inside the United States, Everybody, it's almost required. You have to believe that the Americans went to the moon, right? You have to, you know, wave the flag. That's just one of our things. But outside of, of our country, I, it's like, why do you believe the Americans went to the moon? Everybody answers the same way. It's like, well, it was on television and the American media wouldn't lie. <laughs> and it's like, what are you talking about? We practically invented it. We, that's what we do. So anyway, there you go. I mean, yeah, especially, I, I can see that in a way, because nowadays, um, especially in America, at least what I'm saying is that the media is kind of split, you don't, you kind of have a left side of the media and the right side oh, of the oh, media. Oh, yeah, 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 look, and... look, I, I, anyone that says there's fake news, I give them these two questions, I go, resolve, resolve these two statements, uh, blue team media is absolutely true, and red team media is absolutely true. You can't resolve it's, both because both absolutely spin lies on each yeah. other constantly. So it's like, That's oh, you do believe it. It's like hard to, hard to know to what, what actually is the truth nowadays. Right. I think social media actually makes that worse in a way. Oh, it makes it so just, much worse. Just post their by, opinions. By or, social media changed the game in terms of it, it, it fractured everything even more and it, and it raised the volume levels you know, by by octaves meaning yeah, there's exactly. it's in fact there are people and it gave a whole new sense of credibility if you have there's a wonderful um uh documentary out there which i love promoting called fake famous if you've mm. never seen it it's absolutely brilliant which is that people your age and younger uh they give credibility based on your numbers your metrics in social media whether or not they're real right and so yeah and and there was a guy the guy the guy made a great point he goes he goes people don't understand there are millions of people on instagram with at least a hundred thousand followers he goes that's not possible he goes there's like less than ten thousand famous people in the entire world who are all these people they're just people that want you know as as it goes once you find out once you find out your friends bought subs you're gonna buy subs just to keep up with them yeah, and, exactly. and so, but, but again, you look at it, it's like, oh, this, this yeah. person's got half a million followers. He's, he's so legit. It's like, says who? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, go. Fact check. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, I know what you mean. <laughs> like, I can agree with that. And yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Could you explain to the viewer how the flat earth works? I sure. would probably put like graphics and stuff on the, on the screen. The yeah, film, yeah. Yeah. In fact, let me, grab, let me grab a model real quick, which is even better. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't do that many video ones, so we'll do this. So 
the um, you're not living on a, a tiny little rock that's flying through space that's covered with a little bit of water and a little bit of atmosphere. You, in, in an impossible universe, a residue left over from the Big Bang, you are living in a building, a structure, similar, similar to this, with walls and a floor and a ceiling, and it was built a long time ago by someone that had nothing to do with us, and there's been other cultures that have lived in here, and there's remnants of previous cultures. We're not the first people to rent this apartment, and... Uh, we didn't even figure it out. We didn't even have the technology to figure it out until almost 1960. The Russian, basically Soviet Union and the, and, the, and the Americans. And when we figured it out, we decided to keep it a secret because for, for various reasons. But, uh, but yeah, it's it basically it's walls and a floor and a ceiling. Uh, North Pole would be at the center. And all the continents are splayed around it. And the only continent that doesn't even remotely look like it should is Antarctica. Antarctica isn't something, a snowy Australia. It is a, a giant, giant, giant content, uh, continent that surrounds the entire thing. Cool. So there Thank you, go. you so much. Um, could you elaborate on what you said that the governments are basically trying to keep it a secret? Uh, why is that? Well, because if you didn't figure this out, if, you, if our best and brightest didn't figure it out until almost 1960, uh, and I asked this, uh, I'll drop an, I'll drop a name. I, Piers Morgan, you know, a, asked me about that. And I, and I go, I go, really? You'd break that story? In fact, would you even have the authority to break that story? Because w the potential for chaos, because by 1960, civilization is already built. The cement is already hardened. Everything is running just about the way it should be. And you're introducing a concept in there. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, all those things we told you about the universe... Yeah, yeah the, it's, it's wrong. So what would happen is this. There's threefold. One is academia. Academia would be turned upside down overnight. Uh, as astronomy and astrophysics would be gutted for no, who knows how long. And the remaining... Uh, I mean, that, that happened, for example, before as well, but the other direction, because before people believed in the flat Earth and then science came along and then... And, and said it was a globe. Yeah, but remember and, and when... Then, basically like like sign uh, like science shattered like the flat earth belief it, it did but but it was things were much much slower and you remember 500 years ago mm. most of the population couldn't even read and write so That's true. it was re you could introduce this concept like now everything is so twitchy everything is so hypersensitized that you introduce a new concept like this everyone in the world's going to know about it on their phones in two seconds and you, you don't know what the reaction might be. But anyway, academia would be a nightmare. Uh, libraries would have to be emptied out. And, and uh, world markets economically, you'd have to suspend all stock trading for, who knows, indefinitely, probably. Because you don't know what it means economically. But the big one is religion. Which is, you've got the, the five major religious houses. Uh, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. And you're telling them that you're giving them leverage against science simultaneously and asking them not to take advantage of that. That is not going to happen. They is like these science, religion has been beaten by science, you know, beaten down by textbooks for for centuries. And you're asking them to to, you know, and then the the pendulum is going to swing the other way? No. No, they're not going to let that happen. Uh not not voluntarily. So they just decided to keep it a secret. They're, and it was a fairly easy secret to keep, which is like you just create the Antarctic Treaty, uh, seal off Antarctica for all time. You know, no country, you know, has set up their operations there. Only the military, mostly Americans, um, and military scientists go down there. And it's not even up for debate, uh, for review until 2041. And you're going, well, that's not long from now. Well, yeah, but it was in 1960. <laughs> and it's like, that's 80 years. And by the way, it's the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties. Treaties are meant mm. to be broken. We all know that. Um, <laughs> and then you uh, militarize space and you create the, the, the fake space race and the big fake space program and the Americans go to the moon and then shut the whole thing down and nobody goes back. Nobody else goes to the moon since the Americans, since 1972. Does isn't the plan now to go to the moon again? Like that's planned for old? 2030? Yeah, yeah, the Artemis program. A lot of people don't even know. What, the Americans supposedly shot a capsule around the moon. It's on its, on its way back right now. The, the, the images are horrible. I mean, we can take better shots of the moon from here. They they got within eighty miles of the moon, and I've never seen. I mean, is the the it's it is such a great con job because they're just smudging the images and not talking about our media over here. Isn't even you probably didn't even know it was there. 
Um, well, yeah, I... Did you know there's there's an Artemis so. capsule that's coming back from the moon yeah. right this second? I didn't watch the live stream or something, yeah. But yeah. I, I can believe that, especially live streaming from that range, the visuals can be quite, quite difficult or like... Not really? Are you sure about that? Because our visuals yeah. were pretty good I mean, in 1969, if you believe that crap. So why well, why in 22 uh, why in 22 are they worse than they were in 1969? It's because they're um, scared the the reason. I'll give you the reason. I, it's I, think, I don't know. I don't know about how the visuals were created. I'm not sure if it was a live stream or set up cameras and then when the capsule returned they No, they, no, no. Um, no, no, no. They it was live streamed. No, no, they live streamed it. Which yeah. is which is like how how are you live streaming this in 1969? Because they just told people they it's yeah. kind of like the soft suits not to go off in a whole nother direction and we'll we can go in an hour if or we can go <laughs> full hour if you want that's fine um which is the uh, think about this the like the if you ever know if you know anything about physics and pressure in a vacuum you put any look up on youtube put anything in a vacuum it expands expands until it explodes i don't care if it's a volleyball a football a can of soda whatever there's only one thing that's never done that that's the astronaut suit okay how, how is that how is that happening exactly tell me the physics tell me what's in that backpack that's stopping that astronaut suit from turning into a parade float and no one will no one will say, say anything they will not give the it's like is it a secret how are you stop how are you stopping a law of thermal dynamics you know pressure versus non-pressure and mm. then no one no one will talk about it but but the point was I, i'm not a physician no 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 it's, a, it's okay really all they had to do um, was show it on television that was the key. Circle back to the thing. As long, if you show it on television and you put it in a news program, the bulk of the population, until recently, will believe it as, it's as gospel. It's like, oh, oh, look at that. It's it, it was brilliant. It's like this, these astronauts are walking around in soft suits on the moon, not explaining it. It's sort of like movie stuff, right? Mm. Where where if it's in the movies, you can get away with it. Now we know that. Um, pressure for example like you see those movies that there's a hole in the side of the ship right little hole it's like oh we've only got two minutes of air left get the duct tape you know you know seal this thing no 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 it's instant it's violent it's absolutely in fact the germans uh, look up a wonderful uh, german video that 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 i use all the time which is called um uh vacuum versus steel rail car look that up if you get a chance not aluminum yeah. steel rail car you pump a vacuum field into a steel tank in a rail car in a fraction of a second it's like it was crushed by a monster it's like Gah! but you can't do that in the movies because that blue ruins the whole plot so you remember the uh, i'll throw one real quick you remember the movie aliens the um i i do i've never watched it i've never had the opportunity oh my to god it. The, the end of it, where Ripley is actually opened up uh, an airlock, and there's space. Oh, yeah, that was like the ending, right? Yeah, yeah there's yeah, space the behind her, right? And she's crawling yeah. up the ladder against it. It's like all this stuff is rushing out. That's, it's like, that's you know, only with magic, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, because in reality, if as soon as that airlock's open, not even a full, it, even a, like a foot of it, it's she instantaneous. She's yeah. dead. The girl's dead. The Marine's dead. The alien's dead. Movie's movie's over in a fraction of a second. Yeah. <laughs> the, it's it's mu it's ten minutes. That, that, um, that's short. really magic. That, yeah. that's... <laughs> anyway, sorry, I ramble. What what, what else you got? Um, that's it. Cool. Thank you for your answer. To be honest, um, yeah. gave me quite a good insight of how the flat Earth kind of works. Yeah. Um, that was yeah, good answer. Um, yeah, I would have basically asked a question now um that there's a lot of scientific evidence as well uh, from my point of view at least mm. and mm. <laughs> yes go, example, do do tell you, or, or we go on go on for example scientists physicists ast uh, astronomers use measurements and equations for gps and satellites for example right. for example uh, and those wouldn't work for the flat earth at the, for, as far as i know at least why did yeah um how would it work with a flat earth for example you want me to use gps okay gps is a great one in fact i did a clue as one of my earliest things that i did was the mm. gps system by the way which is the american military system designed in the in the 90s all it is is a repurposing of the old loran system l-o-r-a-n which is a ground-based high power radar system which has limited range. And the reason why we know this, so so officially, if you believe the GPS system, it's 32 multi-blanket covering satellites that are flying all over, that, that cover the whole world, right? To show you yeah. where you are. However, 
for some reason there are huge dead spots in the oceans when you are away from land which is suspicious because basically when you get out of range of land radar which is about 150 200 miles give or take and there's no other land there's no other land radar between you like forget about the southern hemisphere which is all the time well think about like when you go when your plane leaves from california to hawaii great example happens all the time there are no islands between california and hawaii that's the first island that's the whole reason it's a it's a popular zone your plane goes off off the charts now your icon's still there but the latitude and longitude go into something called estimated or approximated mode which means we approximately know where you are but we don't really know where you are just keep going that way and eventually when you come within land range you're going to have to course correct but you'll be you'll get pretty close as long as you're heading you know along those same lines and that happens in all the oceans it's like i know you're probably not old enough to remember the the malaysian flights in the indian ocean that went down um, yeah yeah, well, they, yeah you know they never did find them that and those, yes. and and we're talking about triple seven state-of-the-art flagships right what what happened how did you lose them well because they were in one of the dead zones which we do not talk about if you seriously if you could watch them and so and again your plane icon is there you'll see the plane you know the, the little the little graphic for it but the latitude and longitude blink those are gone and that that happens all the time that was a hint that was dropped to me uh, years ago by somebody who said yeah watch the long haul flights man he goes not only that but the, the long haul flights don't even make sense which is a little different from gps which is they go in directions you 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 absolutely shouldn't go like when you're going southern hemisphere to southern hemisphere like south america to australia to uh, new zealand and places like or southern africa it should you should be staying in the southern hemisphere right if it's a globe mm -hmm. why would you go to the northern hemisphere you go um, you, don't say for fuel don't say you're picking this. up passengers because mm -hmm. it's all it's all about the money it's all about the fuel every almost every flight in the southern hemisphere when you're going from southern to southern takes these huge arcing routes to the north and then goes down but if you put it on a flat map you put on this thing right here it turns into a shallow dog leg seriously watch one of the uh, couple of the clues we got a bunch of videos on this and we even determined later the the easiest way that we found uh, you know the the little proofs were um the emergency landings so if a plane has to divert for whatever usually you know what happens you know somebody has a, a baby on board or somebody gets a heart attack or something you have to you have to divert right um one of my favorites is a flight was going from i think the philippines to los angeles right woman has had starts going into labor it's like ah oh, crap got to do something right hawaii is right in front of them if you're on the globe you know where they took them anchorage alaska doesn't make any damn sense why would you go north to alaska to a, you know to anchorage not exactly known for their health care why because if you're looking at a flat map that's where the flight was closest to it is one of the greatest misdirections ever which is the flights and the even the pilots don't know for the most part and uh, go ahead sorry i, I think if you would look on a i think that's actually quite similar to the globe in a way because the um because actually it is less kilometers it's quite basically close there then probably Hawaii. I don't know. Um, sure. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know where it is right now. But it's that's all right. I mean, obvious. you you want an answer, and I don't. I, I don't even expect a back and forth necessarily. But yeah, exactly. but but, this, but as far as the GPS goes, but as I said, I don't really want to discuss. That, no, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. It, it's but yeah, the, but the, the first really. part. The first part is the most important, which is the GPS system is an American military system not it tell if you're driving down to the corner store oh yeah it'll get you there no no problem you're going long distances in a plane it's probably bending the rules a little bit okay so thank you for the answer um yep. that's pretty clear for me um cool um so the next answer is actually um what sources do you normally use i've seen a lot of footage from the flat earth conventions for example and during the interviews a lot of people named youtube as their main source of for example because i mean you are youtubers so yes. yeah a lot of people probably watch you as well they do and yeah um what do you think what as far as what, what, where, what do, where do we dig up what's... before we make content on on youtube i mean yes but there is a lot of people that that no different than the kids who watch other people play video games in youtube <laughs> yeah. videos instead of playing it themselves 
but those get but but the kids that they that actually made the videos they actually played the games so with the anyone that makes content will do research usually online research we don't i mean like when i was making my stuff i had to do you know look up all sorts of fun stuff that wasn't that weren't youtube videos i just had to do my like the antarctic treaty great example you know there weren't there wasn't a single youtube video on the antarctic treaty i just had to go out and find a freaking copy of it and then you know grab the pdf and start reading through it and then you know make the video now do like anything on youtube uh, or anything in social media people are terrible terrible about fact checking the videos that they watch right why would you that's the whole point you're watching it you know, yeah. it's like i don't want to fact check it. i'm just gonna watch this guy you assume and science does the same thing which is uh why nikola tesla uh, you know he said you know the, the part about science is frustrating is that scientists will build on the shoulders of other scientists and never check the foundation he goes, and you assume that the foundation is always correct. It's like, so by the time you get up to like to the seventh and eighth levels, it's like the equations are absolutely meaningless because they, you know, everyone just makes huge assumption assumptions. So for me, yes, I had to do actually online research, but for a lot of people, a lot of other people, no, they go based off of the online content, you know, the, the, the videos. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because it's easier. People would be what why would they do anything else i mean what we said before basically as well uh, yeah there's so many opinions on the internet right now you can't really fact check everything no so and which yeah. is why people get in trouble and you know things can get a rumor spreads so fast that the damage is already done you know mm. by by the time it's retracted who cares on the internet if it's even out there for a couple of days uh, yeah exactly <laughs> good luck so yeah speak about YouTube, your YouTube channel is probably the yeah the most popular flat of YouTube channel um, out there with millions of views. Uh, what influence do you think do you have on the flat of movement? Uh, for me, uh, the, my influence is primary, meaning that, uh, and I don't mean that. Maybe that's not the word. Of, it is the entry level for flat earth if people when they get into flat earth mine is is probably the easiest to understand it was made for the the common man it was made mm. for very very people that, that don't want to spend time with math i don't want to glaze people over with with uh with heavy physics or anything like that for my stuff is really just connect the dots which is okay here's what i saw out there i think they connect like this and if they connect like this hey it's flat earth <laughs> right and so it's easy to understand and my um my delivery was very consistent i didn't use a lot of emotion didn't throw in a lot of music or anything like that uh, or high drama it was very matter of fact and uh so yeah i i'm if if i don't know what what the the books over there if if it's a college course if flat earth is, is a university my stuff is 101 which is fine. I don't mind because people, I get a lot of people say, oh yeah, I, used, I listened to your stuff like four or five years ago. It's like, hey, great. I don't feel bad. It's like they listen to my stuff, but now they're, they've moved on to other people. It's like, great. Mm -hmm. But just about everybody that gets into uh, the, the concept will run into my stuff sooner or later. Cool. Uh, so what do you think was your influence on the whole movement? Um, did the membership increase, for example? Oh yeah. Or... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I... And I'm not tooting my own horn here. Uh, I inspired a lot of people. And and it wasn't even me. It was the concept. Uh, Jaron, a great example. You know, some people like <laughs> like Jaron from Jaronism, he, he watched my stuff and, and he didn't, it wasn't even that thrilled with the quality of my work. He was like, well, this guy can, you know, can, can do a flyer channel. I certainly can. And other people, you know, they improved on, on the stuff and it's like, hey, great, fantastic. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely uh <laughs> had had an effect on people again because it's yeah. easy to understand if if you're shared my videos were shared to the the reason okay the the biggest reason why my channel did as well is the most of my views by the way aren't even on my channel that's the thing you can where go most out, of your views coming from most of my views are, are are coming from other channels where people shared them so because uh. i made my my channel my base of my entire channel creative commons license right away because i didn't care it's like flat earth it's not like it's going to do anything and because of that people are they are notorious youtubers out there that scour and look for anything that's creative commons license and so like my, the three biggest hits uh there's one called uh, they're hiding god with the greatest lie ever they're hiding god with the biggest lie ever 
and uh, the f uh, Under the Dome full documentary. And I've actually linked to them in my channel, you know, just to show people. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, here's... And people were emailing me and they were saying, oh, hey, I loved your two-hour thing. And it's like, I'd never made a two-hour thing in my life. What are you talking <laughs> about? And finally, somebody's like, wow, I loved your movie. And I, and I said, look, what are you watching? Send me the link to what you just watched. And that's when the first time I saw it, and it was like, had millions of hits. And I'm going... So basically, somebody had taken the the flat Earth clues and grant, stuck them all together, stitched them all together, and put them on their channel. And then so other people stole that and put it on their channels. And it was it was fun, but that's that's where it came from. That's where the the popularity started. Cool. Yeah, I've seen on. Um, yeah, I've made a bit of research as well. I saw you make like flat Earth films yourself as well at some point, like at the beginning. Is that true? Flat Earth films. Yeah, like a film about the flat Earth, like a documentary. No, 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 no. The the, right. the the no. Everybody was no. I didn't. I was lazy. I didn't really have to do that much. <laughs> I mean, I once I did the original Flat Earth Clues. Um, people want to do interviews and and people want to do follow ups and 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 do, do separate things. But the the documentary, the the big documentary, which was um, uh, called Behind the Curve, that mm -hmm. was done by a Los Angeles film team that that followed me around for seven months. And they um, eventually sold it to Netflix and Amazon and, and iTunes and, and those guys. And that got a lot of attention, huge amount of attention, even though they did not like us at all. Uh, <laughs> they, they thought that any, any group that could influence kids, because they saw how easy the message was. Mm -hmm. Once they saw that, they were like, okay, we're going to spin this in a direction. We're going to attack Flat Earth as, as best we can. But uh, no, I mean, hell, I, apparently I've got a wiki page now. I have no idea when when that happened and who built it. People people will do stuff. Seriously, if I live long enough to write an autobiography years from now, if, if that ever happens, it'll be called unsolicited because I never had to pick up a phone. People just started calling me and saying, oh, hey, do this. And all you have to do is say yes. Like, oh, yeah, sure, as long as it's not ridiculous. I mean, yeah, the, cool. that explains why you're not doing a documentary with like a film student. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I've, I've, there's been all sorts of fun stuff that's been released out there in different languages and different countries that I've never seen. I like, like for example, I've done two Russian interviews that I've never seen. I mean, where the a Russian film team came out here, and 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 shot me, and and uh, or a religious uh, network. Uh, Trinity Broadcasting, they came out here and, and shot and we talked. I, people are terrible about follow-up. I, I, there's so many things that I can't show because I never knew where they were. Anyway. Well, yeah, I, I just, yeah, pop up, uh, like a follow-up question came in my mind to earlier. Um, you said that the flat Earth got built by some unknown entity. Right. What do you think might that be? Do you believe in God, for example? Because oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I do kind believe of in God. Biblical... Um, the biblical references to say. Uh, I do. Half the half of the flat Earth movement are strong Christians, at yep. least, because of the model, because of this. If if this is it, if you are living in this building right here, well, then it was built by someone, right? And then you can only go one of two directions: either it's an older civilization that's more powerful than ourselves, uh, or it's the divine. But really, well, you're kind of splitting hairs at that point. Because one man's advanced technology is another man's deity. And so, do I believe in God? Yeah, absolutely I do. Um, and does this, mean, does this mean there is a God? No, not necessarily. I mean, it's not absolute, but it, it takes it a lot, st uh, one step closer to mm. finding out God's phone number. To, to mm. be sure. Um, that goes into like the direction of agnosticism, basically. You, you don't really know if there's a God, but it could be... And, well, it could be something else entirely as well. Yes, yeah, it absolutely could be. But in, in something like this, I mean, the, the, the Christian community uh, really latched on to it because mm. it's like, okay, well, if you're looking for... Because the, the, all religions are looking for the proof of the creator, physical proof. And, yeah. oh boy, if this isn't a, you know, a, a big fingerprint, I don't know what is. And, I mean, it really pushed a lot. I mean, we, there, we, have over, we had over here um, Flat Earth Christian conferences. That I couldn't, I was not even invited to because I couldn't quote enough chapter and verse for them. And I'm like, Fun all right, <laughs> so that's, that's, that's fine. I get it, I get it. So, yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for the answer. That was actually very insightful. Um, yeah, um, that's actually my last question already. Um, 
I've seen, I did some research on the topic in total and I came across um, the truther movement basically. Yeah. And they are, can be, I, I noticed they can be quite extreme and they even claim that the flat earth society is um, controlled by the government and doesn't really exist. Right. Uh, what can you tell me about that? Uh, yeah, the, the, the term is officially called, I think, controlled opposition. And it's, it's, it's as old as time, right? You know, yeah. you, you infiltrate the groups that, what, what you do is if you have a, a faction out there that's against your, you have the majority, you know, you, you're the government, right? And you know full well, there's always going to be a percentage of people that are against you. And there's going to be radicals against you. Well, what do you what do you do in that case? It's straight out of every spy, you know, intel thing ever. It's like you infiltrate those groups, and then you try to steer them in a certain direction. However, with flat Earth, you don't really have to do something like that, and I don't think it's actually in there because I mean I know all the the major speakers that that are in the flat. I know the people that go to the conferences. I I, I know most of the people that make huge amounts of content, and anyone that's even remotely not in our wheelhouse you know in our in our circles is is that we can detect them pretty quickly do, do i think there's ever been a government agent that we've ever thrown out and no, i've never even heard of one i mean i've been accused i've been accused of being a government agent all the time but then <laughs> that's the part of the the truth or community is that everybody in the truth or community is always naturally suspicious so it's kind of like, uh, oh, what's a good metaphor for this? It's kind of like the garage band mentality, right? Yeah. All the garage bands in a particular city know each other, right? They, they play the same clubs, they do this, and then all of a sudden one of them breaks out. Oh, you know, it's like, hey, he's doing arenas, hey, he's doing this, hey. It's like, you know what? Something's going on with that. They sold out. You know, they used to be about the music, but now they're just, now they're not part of us anymore. So mm. when people started, like when I started doing um, uh, as many, you know, mainstream interviews as I was doing, I was accused of it almost immediately, which was, in, and there were people, and I knew who was accusing me. It was the guys that wanted to do it, you know, that, that, mm. that for whatever reason didn't have the opportunity. And I tried to tell them, I'm going, look, the reason people call me is I put my phone number out there and my actual email address, you know, how you found me. And it's like, it's, I'm not hard to find. No, you have your email address basically on your YouTube channel. And that's yeah. How I found yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. everywhere. I mean, everything about me is, is, is out on YouTube and on social media. It's like my physical address. You know, you can mail me stuff. You know, the, my, my phone number, you know, all, based on my whole history. And um, so anyway, sorry, what was I getting back to? So the, the, the truth or community is just naturally suspicious, period, of, mm. of everything. So yeah. when, when people say on a broader sense, if they're outside of our community, oh yeah, I could see them saying that. Oh, you know, flat Earth is controlled opposition, but come on, you know. Yeah, that's what I noticed. Like the flat Earth community is quite chill, um, even though they are, like they are different beliefs and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I can talk to you. You seem really nice, to be honest. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we but we can talk to each other. You know, I have the feeling that the truth of movement is more extreme in a way they had much more extreme beliefs before the flat earth community came out the truther community was very dark mm. meaning uh everything before flat earth had a sinister aspect to it because it was man-made meaning you know there, you know all the major conspiracies well you know the big ones you know, like you know like 9 11 or jfk or or uh, pearl harbor or hang on somebody's no, I'm gonna hang that up. Solic solicitation call. No worries at all. So, um, the um, uh, what was what was happening was is that everyone everyone in those circles because all those conspiracies are man made, created by man, and propagated by man by by governments. You know, people's like, oh, it's the government, man. They're out to get us. Hi, no, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, for the love of God. Um, sorry. Uh, no worries at all. Um, because, but Flat Earth is not. Flat Earth is one of the few conspiracies where we have nothing to do with it. We didn't build this thing. We don't know who did build it. And, the, and it predates our governments by a long, long time. So if that's the case... What you know, it's much, much more positive, which, which is why, by the way, all in most truther communities, you know, that aren't flat earth related, uh, it's 95% men in yeah. ours. It's about 
70% men. There are a number of women because women will uh, resonate. This resonates with women in that it's positive. You know, it's like, oh yeah, by the way, you're not alone in the universe. It's not this big empty, you know, place that, that Car even Carl Sagan said didn't make much sense because it was so freaking empty. No, you're basically in a giant studio apartment and it was made just for you, which is why the religious community jumped on board. And so uh, on our side, if you're in the flat earth truth community, much more positive, way, way more positive. Yeah. Um, outside of the community, th there's still the angerness, the, the bitterness that, that's out there. And they look at us, you know, as kind of the, you know, and I've even had people say, you know, the, the outside of our community say, oh, you know, flat earth makes us look bad. You know, it's like, oh, they, they don't, they, the flat earth, it's, it's not a, you know, you don't want to be associated because it makes, it makes the truthers look crazy. And I'm going, well, that's not much of a leap because she already <laughs> looked pretty crazy to begin with. You know, at least ours is, like you said, chill. You know, there's a, which is why, by the way, that I, in fact, I should probably do a quick study on, on this, which is there's a lot of pot smokers <laughs> in, in the Fly Earth community. A lot. You know, there might I, be a fun study to do, to be fair, like a percentage of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I mean, what, the last conference I went to, I remember there was like 50 or 60 people outside the conference that were just constantly smoking outside the lobby, outside. And I don't think they ever came in. To the conference i think they were just out there just hanging out and, and talking to each other which was great but uh, it's just one of our things very open-minded group so. <laughs> yeah. cool um so yeah um I, I saw also a statistic that there are quite a lot of young people nowadays believing in the flat earth it's yeah. actually more young people than older people nowadays um, yeah do you think yeah, that's, that's related to social media as well yeah videos? what happened there was uh, TikTok. That was yeah. the big thing. Um, once, for whatever reason, well, again, fake the fake famous movie, you know, where ki kids are, it's hard to believe, I'm old enough to say kids. Kids are, um, they're looking for anything social media that's edgy, you know, that, that gets people triggered, you know, one way or the other. And so what they were doing was the, the kids were going in TikTok, were going to YouTube and doing reaction videos and putting them on TikTok. And then we were taking those re those reaction videos and putting them back on YouTube, so it became cyclical. So, so yeah, I was noticing a bunch of younger people too that were really, really getting into it. It's like, yeah, cool. I've had a lot of calls for, over the last uh, couple of years uh, from high schools and universities, where mm -hmm. and most most of it was I hate to say it was because of the documentary, which was it gave professors and students an excuse to talk to flat earthers before it's like oh well, you know let's hunt down a flat earther you know to find information but now it's like oh no watch it. i mean i can't tell you how many classes where the documentary science classes where the flat earth documentary is required it, it's part of the syllabus now to where it's like That's oh yeah we're, we're gonna spend the you know because it's an alternative thinking and so they're they're looking at the the documentary it's like okay these are what other people who are against the, the opposing view to mainstream science these are some of those people and it's fascinating for me to uh to see that and because i was always curious i'd ask them, I was like why are you calling me it's like oh <laughs> well, we, we just watched your documentary like you did in class <laughs> it's like yeah because again if it's social media, because it was Netflix sanctioned, Netflix wouldn't put something out there that would be harmful. So, uh, so they, 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 or Amazon or, or, or any of the others, it's like, no, 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 you know, if it's not, it's not hate speech. So it's like, okay, I'll take it. Interesting. Yeah. yeah I didn't know that. That's quite cool. Um, yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically that's all the questions I had. Would all right. Like to give. Well, would you like to say something else, or like what you haven't said yet? Um, um, if there's anything else, I don't know. Um, I, I can I can give you a warning, which is, is and I, I put this actually at the front of uh, the the last book I wrote, which is, it's very matrix like. We use a lot of matrix metaphors, and you know, the matrix is now uh, 23 years old. Um, I mean, but yeah, that's a common theory as well that we're actually living in the matrix, and it's like a fifty-fifty chance that we do, and fifty-fifty chance. Oh, that we it's do. it's more than fifty-fifty. No, this is this is yeah. not, and I I don't want to give Elon Musk credit because I hate that guy, uh, <laughs> which is it's this is not a but he was the first person I knew that said it in mainstream media, which was a base reality, 
which yeah. is this is no no it's not even close to being a base reality the double slit experiment screams that the double slit experiment which is what we use in because i was a video game producer back in the day um which screams what we do in video games which is when you're looking at something what, what you're looking at me right now everything is rendered perfectly what's behind you is not now of course yeah. you've, got a, you've got a camera looking behind you so you're, you're gonna have to render that but in the hallway you the hallway might not even be there because yeah, why, why? I, i'm thinking that sometimes as well it's just a an interesting thought experiment really yeah um but yeah i remember actually an interview with elon musk i watched it quite a while ago and yeah i think that thought is kind of comforting but also kind of weird it, um, well, because... we've, we've done a lot of science fiction movies along. I mean, we've covered just about every possible option in science fiction. And this is not a yeah. new concept. You Don't forget that, and forget about The Matrix, there was another movie out there that was made about the same time called uh, The 13th Floor. If you've never seen mm. it, check it out. Which was based on a German movie in, from <laughs> 1975 called World on a Wire. Check that I out. I actually know that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was, I mean, the fact that the, the Germans were trying to make a virtual reality movie in the 70s, bold, absolutely freaking bold, because, I mean, nobody had computers in the freaking 70s, but that was based off of, of, the, of the original source material, which was called Simulacron 3 from the 60s, which was, again, all the early computer guys thought about this, it's like, if you can imagine a simulated reality, and they saw, it's like, oh yeah, eventually our computer technology might reach that point. Well, then it probably already has reached that point, mm. and and yeah. this is and so the the whole concept of uh, uh, the thirteenth floor was when they were building a simulation, they realized that some of the stuff they were seeing in the simulation they were seeing outside of the simulation, and which is which is what we see with the double slit experiment, which is the double slit experiment is like uh, meaning the graphics aren't being rendered if you're not looking at it, not not completely. It's like, well, why are we seeing that here? <laughs> that that shouldn't yeah. that shouldn't be there. Um, I, I'll take one more stab at you, and then we'll we'll close it up. Which is, okay. um, look up something if you get a chance. Called very fascinating. I mean, again, I do I believe you know the world is flat. We're in a building, sure. But if we are in something like this, this is probably digital. I mean, no different than yeah. mine, Minecraft or GTA or, or Warcraft or any of that, because that's what this—that's what it looks like when you build this. The only thing difference is is that in a computer simulation, everything is is angled off. Can, you know, it, everything's right angles, everything's squares, because that's that's how engineering works. Um, the other thing you might want to look up is something. There's a wonderful wiki entry on it called Neuroscience and Free Will. You ever heard of this? Not, no, I haven't. Oh, this, this, will, this will blow your mind. So neuroscience and free will, uh, where they, you know, they had people sitting in front of the computer with little taped computer things on their heads, and it's like, okay, pick a number between one and ten, and we're going to monitor your brain waves, right? And they, and when you pick the number, when you decide, you know, one and ten, right? The the, the uh, note the time, you know, the, the the seconds and tenths of seconds, you know, when when you decided to pick the number, and so. Here's where it gets weird. The computer, of course, our computers aren't good enough to tell what number they picked, only that they picked a number. But yeah, yeah. they could tell it in advance of when the people consciously picked it. So if I say, pick a number between 1 and 10, right? Mm. And you think of that number right now, right? Okay. The computer knew that you picked it 8 seconds ago. Uh, even before I was asking the question, you're saying, okay, what does that mean? The, that yeah, means yeah. we're talking about something like predestination, and which yeah. science hates, which means it kind of makes sense because it's the saving of resources. You may not be living in a virtual real-time simulation. You may be living in a pre-recorded movie, but you picked all the decisions beforehand, and you're going, why would you do that? Think about this, right, for a second, which is... I love this concept, and, I, and I've got a metaphor for it, because it'll circle back to the video game thing, which is, think about when kids are watching someone play a, a video, you know, a YouTube video of someone playing a video game, right? Right, you're yeah. watching some, some, somebody playing um, uh, Fortnite, right? Uh, you know, you're getting almost the same experience as if you were playing it yourself or watching it in real time. However, you're just watching a little MP4 video. Tiny, tiny amount of resources. Right? But you're getting almost the same experience. What's the difference? The difference is 
all you have to do is put in memory blocks and you could be living this thing, you know, all basically you go into before you go into the simulation, you pick all the high, you know, all the benchmarks, all the other things. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do as a kid, so when I get married, have kids, career, blah, 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 right? And then you do a memory stunt, you know, shunt right in the beginning to where you don't remember making those decisions. Yeah, that basically plays with determinism, like that, yeah. that's like a, a, a psychological, well not psychological, but philosophical concept that means that you're basically, your life is predetermined. Yeah, and, oh, why, and why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't yeah. you do a pre, it, it saves all the heartache. Why would you do anything in real time and, you know, exactly. and possibly, you know, do something that you wouldn't want to do and, and have instant regret? Do a pre-record, everything's already set for you. All you have to do is take care of the memory issue. Anyway, last but not, not least which is the matrix tie-in, which is this. Um, if anyone's thinking of getting into this, right? Uh, and I, and it wouldn't, whatever, you, whatever you're thinking of doing, be careful because it is a red pill, blue pill. This is not like any, any other secret or conspiracy you can hide in the desert, right? You can bury it. Conspiracies can be kept, lots of them are, but something like this, once you see it, once you grasp it, you can't unsee it. So, like the Matrix, you know, when, when, when Morpheus was saying, it's like, just so you know, that's all the red pill. He goes, once you go down this, you're not coming back. That's it. You're, you're out. And, and you, 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 which is why the, the whole story kind of broke down, because Cypher wanted to go back. It's like, how does that work? Does he reinstall it? Does he yeah. do a memory wipe? It doesn't really matter. So, with Flat Earth, which is why we have such a high retention rate. We have a higher retention rate than organized religion. Which is because once you see it, I, I'm not here to, to convince you, to persuade you. You tear down the globe yourself. And because we are our parting shots when we when we end our things, we say, do your own research. I don't care if you don't believe me or not, do your own research. But if you do, make sure you want to do it. Because if you because there will be a point if you cross that line and then you convince yourself, that's it. You're 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 now you know in a in a whole different frequency, and hmm. it's uh, it's it's just a warning to people. But it's so far it's worked out very very well. Nobody's freaked out. Nobody's jumped off a building or, or gone on a shooting rampage and, and done anything like that. For, I mean, I almost I was waiting for that like in the first couple of years, where hmm. it's like somebody's think... going to start blowing up stuff and saying flat Earth, like spray, spray painting it all over walls. I think what I realized now, because I didn't really have that in mind when you were telling me that this is basically created by a higher power of some sort, yeah. that that kind of can give people a lot of comfort, comfort because they know it can. that um, nothing is random in life. Uh, there is someone watching over us, someone that created this world. It's not all random. And yeah, I, I can see that. I can see that aspect. Um, I, I don't think you convinced me, but I think I understand it much more. I I, I, I can see the viewpoints, and it's yeah. It's I, I'm really not again. I'm not here to convince you. I, that yeah, was not yeah. that was not my job. But yeah. but but as I'm leaving you, I want to mention that you got you've got a Mercator map behind you on the wall, right? I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's interesting about that map is that, and a lot of people don't notice this. Why would you? But you will if you turn it upside down. Is all the pointy bits point in one direction all of them they all That's point they all point down they all point south but on this map and you and you'll notice if you turn it upside down but on this map they all point out which is way more natural in fact pan, pan G well, I, I didn't even realize that to be fair That's a, nobody does that's a, that's actually a fun thing yeah huh. Yeah, 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 Pangea, you know, the supercontinent, you know, the theory yes. from years ago, that makes more sense on this thing than that it, thing. It's quite, it's quite, yeah, because it centers. Maybe it centers and then it spreads out, you know, like, like anything when it dissolves, you know, in a, in a, in a pool of water. Whereas in a globe, it's like, where does Pangea on a globe exactly? But whatever. It's just gone. Anyway, but thank you, thank you. Um, is there anything else you need for me? Any other resources you can I'll all... See interview was super insightful so thank you so much for your time yeah yeah super helpful if and you if you yeah. need, if you need links let me know if you have any particular topic whether it be sunsets or meteors the moon or nasa or whatever it is feel free yeah. to, to shoot me a thing and if there's anybody else because you know, other people tough to find i think because it's only a short documentary for now the interview would be fine for me but okay. i would love to uh like 
like um, do a much longer version in the future. Oh, okay. Hopefully, if I have time. Uh, so cool, cool, cool. Yeah. That, so I would definitely contact you again in that case. All right. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And uh, uh, again, if you need anything else, just feel free to drop me a line. Cool, thank you. Um, Dan, have a lovely day. And well, speak to you. All right. See you. <laughs> cool, bye. See ya. See ya.